I look the way I look, I have a lot of tattoos and whatnot. And I was really expecting that people will be acting quite negative towards me. And You do learn about uh, Japanese culture without trying. Oh. Figuring out which one is more reliable. Hey guys and girls, what Ash Japanese, it's your flashy fashion reporter Kathy Cat, and today we're gonna go hit the streets of Tokyo and ask the foreigners here what did they expect of Japan and were their expectations actually met. Let's go and ask foreigners in Japan. So you came here first when you were 10 years old. Yes. And I think you, you saw Japan and you had like a certain expectation coming back to Japan now as a grown up. So in comparison, how has Japan changed for you? Was it like you expected it to be or has it changed? So just today when I stepped out of the Harajuku station, I looked at it and I was like, oh my God, this street is exactly the same as I remember it. <laughs> that might be like, you know, just my illusion in my head. But when I was 10 years old and I came to Japan, it was the first time that I went somewhere so far away from home. And I was in awe. I was like, I fell in love with it. It was just, wow, everything was so amazing. You know, in that time, I did like some research. I was learning a bit about the culture and whatnot because I was so impressed with it. So now it kind of feels like it's not such a shock, but it's still super interesting and super impressive and the food is so cheap and so good. I'm sure everyone says that, but it's true, it's true. <laughs> this time around, after you've done your research, was there anything you expected? Anything that met your expectation and anything that didn't meet your expectation? Actually, this one's like kind of uh, an odd one. So I look the way I look, I have a lot of tattoos and whatnot. And I was really expecting that people will be acting quite negative towards me and like to talk to me or something like this. But it's actually not the case at all. Like, I don't even notice people staring that much. Surely there are, you know, some people looking, but that's normal. I think people are really nice to me, but not a lot speak English. Uh, <laughs> have you tried th or thought about going to an onsen or a hot spring? Because some of them don't allow to choose, right? I, I didn't even think about it. Like, I mean, I know that they don't allow it, so that's why I just... Yeah, I said, okay, let's skip this one. All right, if you research, there are actually some onsen hot springs that allow tattoos in, so you might be lucky. Yeah. I might, maybe next time. Now I'm like, what, last four or three days? So next time, but I'm definitely coming back. Yeah, I do absolutely love it. What is one thing you learned from Japan? You seem like you travel a lot, you live in different countries and cultures, so I'm sure you learned something. Um, I think they're really big on manners here and um, just being respectful of other people. Um, and that's something a lot of other countries can take away from Japan. Uh, also, I like the women's fashion sense. It's like quite demure, demure and like not like out there like other countries. So those are probably two main things, manners and fashion sense. And modesty, uh, respect and politeness is um, the thing that probably sets Japanese culture apart to most others at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Oh. Is there anything you learned in Japan or anything you learned for coming before coming to Japan? I mean, obviously Japan's huge in various kinds of pop culture, so you do learn about uh, Japanese culture without trying uh, because they export you know, the anime and the manga and the martial arts and it has um, an impact on the world in a whole bunch of different ways that you sort of just pick up without realizing. You probably don't need to come here necessarily to understand at least a little bit about those things. Um, but nothing beats being here, obviously. I think it's quite respecting my expectations. I was expecting a very calm, quiet country with good people, and and for the moment it's like I was expecting, so... This street is not calm and quiet, though! More than Italy sometimes. Trust me, yes. Yes, sometimes Italy is a real chaos, uh, on Sunday especially, and it's more about the, not the quantity, but how people act in the, in the street. Okay. So it, it's, it's quiet for us. Right, so everything else is quiet, buddy, but in Italy, people are a bit more rowdy yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They run, they try to <laughs> do everything, so yes, it's calm for us. This. They are very respectful and helpful. Yes. Like when you ask uh, for something, they are very yes. happy to help us. Mm -hmm. Like they're not uh, uh, judging or anything, like they're very helpful. Like very. And uh, really smiling. <laughs> oh, do people in France not smile as much? <laughs> <laughs> not really. <laughs> what? <laughs> not really. Yes. Sometimes, but not uh, yes. not that much. What is a thing you would not tell the world to learn from Japan? Uh, because I have a little social anxiety is that there is a lot of people, but it's okay because we're in Japan and it's uh, very touristic. 
But uh, I think uh, sometimes when I have to cross uh, the street, I'm a little bit scared uh. because there is much a lot of people and I'm scared to walk too slow or too fast and just that. But uh, uh, besides that, it's perfect. If you didn't learn anything in Japan yet, what did you learn for Japan, meaning before you came? No smell of deodorants. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> cultural things? Any other cultural thing you can think of that you learned before coming to Japan? The escalators. People usually, but it's not all. Like, it's not the same in every district. Yes, so we yes. have to follow which side people are on just to make sure that there's a lane that people can pass through if they want to walk fast. I really love like uh, people bow like that, and like I started doing it as well, and it feels good. Like you know, thank you, thank you. You know, like uh, I like that. <laughs> this is your first time in Japan. Yes, it is. <laughs> what did you expect? Um, honestly, I. That's a good question because I. I mean, like, I've watched anime for a while and I'm like, I can't expect just an things in anime to happen. But I guess I expected, you know, fast tr public transit, which, yes, I, I guess I I can't say I was super surprised by anything because I, I took I took a couple Japanese courses in college and I did a lot of research before coming here and making sure I got like, and of course, because I came with two of my friends, we like bounced ideas off of each other and like watched a lot of videos on Instagram of like, okay, these are probably the things you're gonna hear in a kombini and like, here's a lot of the things. So I guess my main thing is like, do your research, but I definitely did. And there are still times where I get really embarrassed or flustered because I'll be like, okay, I studied this, I studied what to say. And then people will like speak really fast. And I'll be like, oh. um, well, you cheat like at the counter, right? When they go like, I learned to recognize Fukuro and I'll be like, no, I have a bag. Um, I'll be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're not prepared for that. They suddenly ask you too many other questions. They're very, very fast. Those those listening exercises, my friend sent me a bunch of those listening exercises that you see on Instagram and that helped me like prepare me. But even then I still get like freeze up like, ah, what am I supposed to say? Uh, I didn't process any of that. Yeah, hearing is also a little difficult for me because processing auditory sounds and stuff is like that. But so you expected some things because you did your research. Yes. It's how many percentage would you say Japan is living up to your expectations in general? Like 100% yes, everything is like I thought it would, it's going to be 0%, nothing is like you thought it was going to be. I guess like 75%. I thought public transit would be as fast as cars, like our back home. But to be honest, to get like certain places, I was, t my, my friend and I were going to, like, I was taking her to her hair appointment and we realized 30 minutes out, oh my God, it's 30 minutes away, we need to go there. Looking at public transit, it was like, oh my God, it takes 30 minutes to get there. And it's like, okay, so it's definitely something where it's like, if you want to do a lot of different things, you got to map out all of the places. You can't just be like, okay, well, they're all in Tokyo. I'll be able to go to all of them in one day. Instead, it's more like, oh, they're all in different parts of Tokyo. Like one of them's in Shibuya, one of them's in Shinjuku, and like one of them's in Harajuku. So it's like you have to plan out your routes each day. And that's what we've been doing. But it was also like, oh, it's in the, it, it, it shouldn't be too far away. It's like even something that's like a couple miles away is still gonna take like 30 minutes to get there because of public transit. Yeah, sometimes you have to like change trains or it's like an odd angle and then it takes more time. Oh yeah, and like debating between Google Maps and Apple Maps, oh. figuring out which one is more reliable oh, was, okay. I uh, my, I met up with my friend uh, Aiden here, shout out to Aiden, love you. Um, <laughs> they were like, oh yeah, I used to be like an Apple Maps trooper, truther, but <laughs> okay. But uh, I ended up like Google Maps is way more reliable and it tells you like which part of the train you need to get on and like which part is least crowded and what directions to how to get through the train station too has also been like really, really helpful because it's like, okay, I get off my train and now I'm like looking around and everybody's moving and I need to know which exit to go to because it's not just like, oh, all trains have one exit. There's like at least like, yep. There's at least three. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. And so it's like, okay, but the sign for the exit or the train you need to get on might not be immediately there once you get off. So it, Google Maps ends up telling you, oh, follow this sign until you see this sign and then start following that one. And then you should see the sign of the exit that you're trying to get to. Yeah. So good choice. That's why Google is 
probably kicking Apple's peach right now. <laughs> There is one expectation I had that got not met. Pretty much all of my expectations did get met. But one expectation that didn't get met is that I thought more Japanese people would wear traditional wear. And that's actually not a thing as much. Like I come from the southern part of Germany where we still wear our traditional dundle clothes. Even people at the, you know, at the post office wear it. People at the, at the city hall wear it. We wear our traditional gear for weddings. And in Japan, it is very limited or even more limited. A lot of people only wear their traditional wear for weddings or for summer festivals and, and maybe special festival related things like dances and such. Uh, generally, just people dressing in traditional Japanese clothes is kind of rare. So if you see someone who wears some traditional Japanese clothes, don't just go and take pictures of them. They have a reason why they dress up like that. If you want to take a picture of them, always ask them, shashin tottemo ii desu ka? Meaning, can I take a picture of you? More information about Japan that you need to know, check this one out here and in the comments out in the comment section down below. I'm looking forward to seeing, have you traditional dress in your country or not?